and welcome. Jimmy Cube here. I am coming to you with another acrylic pour today. Um, and just so many people are asking me, especially on my Facebook art page, for information, even though I tell them that I've got a YouTube channel that has all this information um, with videos, um, you know, questions like, what do you keep the bottom of your canvases, you know, from stopping the paint from ruining all the back of your canvases? Some people don't bother putting anything on the back. They like the rough and ready kind of look. Um, I believe if you're going to sell your artwork, then you need to make the extra effort to not get paint all over the back of your canvas. So the reason I use, not on all of them, but on the ones that I am going to, or probably going to sell or gift, I always use the um, masking tape. So I'll put it on the back. And then uh, when you finish painting and resin or whatever you want to do with you, you, you get an this one's finished, resin, dry, sparkling gorgeousness. The video is already up. And when you take the tape off, it leaves a nice clean back. So probably if I was selling this one, I would then use um, a brown, here it is, brown paper to um, put on the back, cut out my piece and, and um staple it in so it's actually got a brown paper and then you can put your you know little uh, emblem or whatever it just finishes it off beautifully and at another day i'll show you how to do the brown paper but just that little effort of putting that on leaves the back fairly clean got a little bit of paint but that can't be helped but anyway if you are covering it the back in your brown paper then you don't really even need to do that. But it's just a nice little touch if you go that extra effort. But that's um, how I prepare my canvases. And the other thing I've been asked is about the, you know, how do you keep your canvases up off? So they well, there's a number of products. Some people use cups underneath. I've got lovely stands that Molly from Molly's Artistry sent me that uh, she puts them up on stands, which I do like, love doing on really big pieces. But um, these I really love just, these are just called giant push pins. Underneath my video, I have a Amazon store that's got all of my supplies in there and more and you can get these on on the amazon store or you can get them from the australian online supplier that i have there so i just use these and just my hammer and whack them in and to get them out when you're finished is just wiggle is just literally wiggle them from side to side and they come out so that's uh, pretty simple but they do need a bit of a wiggle. Just wiggle, 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 pull them out. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Right, and then you've got your canvases up and not um, sitting on your surface and it's ready to paint. So I've been asked that so often that I thought I've got to show people. Rightio, what I'm doing today is I'm going to use up maybe the last of this beautiful turquoise that I have made up in here as my base coat so it's just made up of my normal pouring medium which is in the drop down box and is literally the global uh, turquoise with my um, homemade pouring medium so i'm going to put this on here this probably could be doing with a little bit uh, thinner for what i'm going to attempt today but um, we'll see how this goes. So just quickly spread it out. I'll try and cut out the boring bits for you.
Rightio. I think I'm going to add a little bit of um, flow troll to that remaining paint so I can get it uh, thinner. Uh, yeah, my husband brings me these home when he wants to get in my good books, the flow troll, Australian flow troll. I think they cost about $65 here for four litres. So it isn't cheap. And if you're using it in all of your paints, it would be quite an expensive to use as a, you know, an additive. But if you're using just to get cells, you only need a tiny bit. And I will try and show you that recipe too quickly because I will, what's a cell activator? What does it do? It's just uh, something that you um, create or add to your paint if you want a certain effect of cells so I'm going to put some of that Aussie flow troll in there oh no lucky that big four litre uh, like I said it's when my husband wants to get in my good books he comes home with flow troll waves it in front of me <laughs> and I'm like and I'm melt and say yes yes anything anything <laughs> well literally he's my husband <laughs> rightio being silly so I'm just gonna wipe that a second I'm going to give that a good shake. I just put Floetrol in it. I'm watering it down. Plus, I'm hoping that my paint that I'm going to put on top is going to then help create cells because Flo Australian Floetrol seems to just really do that. It just helps create lovely cells. So I'm going to pour some of that in here. Pouring it in the middle because I do want to blow this one out. So I'm, I might put a bit around the edges because I'm going to blow it out. Rightio. That colour is absolutely stunning. Stunning, stunning. Right. On my base, I've got some of this. Oh, what was it called? Uh, I think it is the cool red. Cool red. I always get mixed up between me cool and the warm. So this is cool red. And I'm literally going to do a puddle. Puddle pour. So nice. Plenty of paint in there. I'm going to add some of the wicker yellow it's a global color i'm not even sure if they do it anymore i'll have to check but it's like an orange yellow so it's not too bright and then i'm going to add some gold to that beautiful and then of course one of my favorites is the dark purple which I always make even darker by adding phalo blue and a little blob of black. So that goes in there. I'm not going to actually add any um, special... Uh, this is just my white mixed up my normal way. It's down there in the drop down box telling you what to do. And this is some of the lovely turquoise. So I'll put some of that in there. And again, some of that lovely wicker yellow. And then I'll go again. Maybe this this is my purple that's, well, I call it this one my very delicious because I've made this very dark. This is the very dark red, a drop of phalo, phalo blue or cool blue, and then um, black if you want it to go like a real dark cherry that's really dark in there. So that's what I'm going to do with that today. So this is just one big padule. A little bit more white. And I'm not after the selly selly look, but we're going to see how it goes. I'm going to whiz over with my heat wand to burst any air bubbles. These heat ones, they're also in the drop down box in the links below. Okay, 
This blower is from a charity shop. It's called a Baby Bayless, and I don't think you can actually buy them anymore, but you can buy small travel hair blow dryers that have got the bendy handle, which is very good when you're pouring or, or use an acrylic paint to blow because it's it's actually better, easier to use this way. So let's go, you lovely people. Actually, this probably needs doing with my big hair dryer because I don't... Ah, no, give it this one because I wanted a wider blowout. Maybe that would be the sensible thing to do. But anyway, I'm going to go with it. Let's try this. That's come out with lots of cells. There's definitely too much paint on there. I might have trouble with it drying, uh, cracking if it's too much paint, but there is. So the more I blow it out, the more risk I've got of sending it a bit muddy. This is gorgeous here. Um, I'm just a bit worried that this is a bit thick my um i shouldn't have put so much paint i went overboard i absolutely love the composition of it i love it it's very nice maybe a little bit this way gorgeous it's actually kind of created a whole frame of its own around there with this in here, which I'm wondering if I blow that on its own, would it look odd or I maybe do a, some embellishment with a skewer in there? Oh, outwards. actually got lots of lovely movement and it's very beautiful I'm just a little bit worried that's gonna just there's thicker parts that I don't want to blow out because they look so nice um, but that does look gorgeous so I'll just finish off the my edges because most of the paint is now blown over the edges which is great when you're wanting to finish off your edge because you've already got the paint blown over it so that's super duper, pretty happy with that. Even though this has sort of gone like a burnt orange around there, this is kind of dragon-like. I love it. I'm gonna bring you down and see what you think. Actually, lots of lovely movement in it. Just look at this. It's really gorgeous, even the colors. They're just beautiful. Um, 
I was kind of worried that they looked muddy, but they actually just look like burnt orange, which goes beautifully with that turquoise. Kind of like a nice bird in there with its beak showing through. It's like a flying elephant to me. And look at this. It's beautiful. I love it. I'm really, really happy with that. It's just something a little bit different and quirky. And I love it. And I hope you do too. And I hope you've learned something. If there was any info there that you found useful, please let me know. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. That costs you nothing and it helps me and I'm really, really grateful. So I want to thank you lovely people for joining me today again. And I'll be back tomorrow. Um, get my thinking cap on and try and do something again that's not the same old, same old every day. <laughs> so, okie doke my lovelies. Take care and bye for now.